This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the stock market. I'm looking at the S&P, and I'm going to give you some concepts related to what I think is really going on in terms of where true support and resistance is right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this now. Um, I've actually got a basic chart. I've kind of taken everything off of this uh, except the volume. Uh, and what I wanted to show, and I've got this color-coded, so if we look at what's taking place, we have this 4,000 mark, which I believe is the key level that the market has been trying to hold. Now, I know we're talking about 3,900 now, but the reality is it's really 4,000. And the reason why I'm going to say that is because when we get a lot of momentum to the downside, you have this concept that Gann, uh, W.D. Gann referred to as lost motion. And that's where you have a key level and you end up kind of breaking through that. And instead of it being um, an exact point, it actually overruns it a lot. It, and it just has to do with the momentum characteristics. Just like the momentum of this move was strong enough to carry it through this prior peak. I mean, this was truly resistance. Now, it got through there, but this should be considered a double top. You know, those are basically, that's a double top. I know it ended up making a higher high, but in reality, those are basically the same area of resistance. And um, it's just uh, this lost motion concept where when something's moving at such a fast pace, it's hard to stop it right on a dime at that level. And I think that's what's happened here. Look at what happened here. We have 4,000 and we dropped down. Now, we did drop down a little bit more than 100 points. It was a little bit over 100 points. And then we rallied above and almost hit about 100 points above. So it, it's this concept of as below, so above. If you've ever heard that from a technical standpoint, you can see these moves and they're about the same in terms of their size. So we move down about 100 and then we move back above this point about 100. Then we come down and we move down about 200, didn't quite hit the 200 mark here, and then didn't quite hit the 200 mark here to the upside. So we get back, we get below it and then we get back above and we go about the same distance above. And then we drop down and we make a new low and now we get approximately 350 points um, below the 4,000 mark. And then we make a move to the upside and we make a move approximately 350 points above. OK, and then we come back down below. We move a move a little over 100 uh, to the downside. And now we've made a little a move a little above 100 to the upside. You see how this is the market is swinging around. It's it's using this midpoint or this balance point 4000 as a center line. It's it's uh, trading around the 4000 mark. OK, and we're and I call it a balance point because it's basically, again, as above, so below. We're getting the same thing happening over and over again. And what we need to see is real failure at 4000 or success above 4000. Have a real solid test of that line and then fail. And we haven't really had that. We're still trading around it at this point in time, including what happened this week. We traded above it last week and now we traded below it this week. There's no proof that we've that it's using this line and respecting it right now. We continue to trade around it. So if we get some follow through here, I know a lot of people are talking about this 3900 area, but I'd actually like to see it fail that way if it's going to fail. And what we could do is go down 200 points and then turn around and go up 200. I mean, for all I know, this could continue. Um, I'm going to show you some things that I think are real important to watch right now that I think are a little bit different than this. But I wanted you to be aware of what I think is actually going on. I also want you to understand this lost um, lost motion concept. And the reason is that if you if you know what's going on, you can use key levels and when you undercut those levels, so this is just a loss motion movement. And when it gets back above, you can look to take, use our trading tactics. Like to, it's basically an undercut and rally pattern. But if you understand what's really happening, um, 
these moves above prior and key levels, even this move uh, here below this move, I would consider to be lost motion. It's, it's really kind of like a double bottom, but it overran it. It did it via a gap and then it snapped back. So uh, just kind of keep an eye out for those patterns. You can even see a short one here where we, we got back a below and then went back above. And then here we're doing the exact opposite. If you're looking for these, and let's say this comes back down and then works its way back up through 3900. Let's say this gets a little bit more. Then we've got a little bit of a mini loss motion around the 3900 area. And maybe we want to push up towards 4000. Just be aware of these because I think they can be useful. They happen all the time in the market, all the time. And um, I'm, I'm constantly on the lookout for those patterns when they're happening because I think if you can take advantage of them. The other way you can do that is to look at it this way. So um, I know this was a key level here. Okay, now when we came down, we overran that. You see how we overran the support level right here and then came back above? Well, that's kind of like a lost motion. That should have been support and we overran it. And then we came back and we had a nice move. Now this time there really, really wasn't any lost motion. And then it moves up, actually had lost motion on a breakout here and failure. And then we trade down through and then we have the opposite of that where we try and get through to the upside and it, and it basically fails. So it is pushing through there and it does take a little bit of a double top to really fail. Um, but th that's really all trading around this original kind of breakout and key zone. So just be aware of those. That's why I constantly will draw horizontal lines and keep them there because um, I want to know where these key levels are. Where are you acting as both support and resistance over time? And if you can use that into your advantage, it's just because again, we're looking for that. I've done a, a video on this in the past. It's we're looking for these windows of opportunity. Where is the next window? If we fail at this window, where's the next window? Well, the next window is probably down in this zone. So you can play from this area, from this level to this level and play those windows as best you can. Um, right now, I just want to point out 4,000, I think, is the key level that we need to monitor. If we can fail at that line, uh, that would be a much bigger negative than what's taking place right now. Right now, we're just channeling around the line. Now, let's get into the, the, the true, uh, my typical um, analysis, because there's one thing that's taking place right now that's really bothering me. And it just took place this week. And uh, if you watch my stock charts uh, stock talk show, you know, I brought this up, uh, but I want to bring it up again in case you don't watch that. So the 18 month line is currently declining on the S&P and the spider here. All right. And we're below a declining 18 week right now. Again, the pivotal line is 4,000 because if we get back above 4,000, then this line is flat. The 18 month is actually flat. It's not turned down at that point because right now we haven't closed the month. Now, if we finish off the month, this line's going to be down and it won't matter. The 4,000 mark is not going to matter as much. So I think we'll make a decision by month's end. We've got a couple weeks left as to whether we're going to hold 4,000 or whether we're going to really break it and start another leg to the downside. And what I've been trying to say here is if we're below a declining 18 month and we're below a declining 18 week, that is a massive risk position in the market. The market has huge risk in it. All right. We've got, we've only had two times where we have that, uh, where we're below, uh, where we would break the 18 month and it fail and then roll over and then be below a declining 18 month. The two times that I went back to last 20 years, January of 2001 and May of 2008, you go back and look at those periods. It was not a, a pretty uh, sight what followed. So I'm considering this to be a no buy zone. Below 4,000 is a no buy zone. I think there's too much risk in the market right now. It's scaring me. Uh, for the first time, I'm looking at these charts and I'm saying, you know, I really like the way this drove off the low. But now that this has kind of tried to get up going around this 18 and around this 4,000 mark, and it looks like it's failing, as long as it stays below 4,000, I think you have to have a, 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 a mentality that you don't want to lose money. Okay, this is not a time to be um, a hero. Um, if, if we go back and look at the periods on the S&P where we were really breaking the 18 month and starting a trend to the downside, 
it, these are the periods you really want to avoid. Up until this point, you could almost be forgiven for playing long and being long big time. But I think from this point on, if you ignore what's taking place, I think you're taking on a massive amount of risk that you don't need to if you're watching these videos. Because the fact is, as we've known, the 18 month is incredibly important. We failed at that line. Now, I will say this, I know I'm sounding incredibly bearish right now, but if we can get the strength to get back through 4,000 and get this 18 week line curled back around, then the risk could be off for now. I think what's really gonna help the situation is breaking this trend line. Um, I, I would tell you that anything below this trend line, anything to the south side of this trend line, is a danger zone because we could continue to trade around the 4,000 mark without any resolution. But as long as we stay below this trend line to the downside, the trend is bare. I mean, the bias is down and there's risk to the downside. We're not going to turn this around. So look at the daily chart. We've got a break of the downtrend line and now we're testing the low. So if we can turn this thing around and break this to the upside, we've got a one, two, three to the upside. In order to do that, and based on the timing, it, it is most likely going to have to break this downtrend line at the same time. Now, it's possible we could do it in a real big hurry and turn up in a quick way and break and turn this one, two, three. And if that were to happen, I would probably still wait for this to be broken, this trend line to be broken. I think this trend line is the most important thing that we can watch right now. And the main reason for that is what's going on with this line and this line. And I want proof that this is not a big decline phase coming. We've got, we got the potential for a lot of risk. I know I've got this overhead. This is momentum to the downside on the monthly. For this to turn around on a dime and do something really significant to the upside is going to take new information in the market. Something is going to have to change and the violent move that it's going to have to cause a move to the upside that would continue to the upside would be so obvious. The strength of the move is going to be so obvious if we're going to turn this thing around based on what this looks like right now. So just recognize we got a massive amount of resistance up there. Um, really on the S&P, it's 4,300 to 4,400. And um, if we can do the one, two, three, that would be kind of like the first sign. But uh, just be really careful as long as we're below 4,000. I think below 4,000 is uh, what I'd call a no buy zone. Just to be really uh, defensive until we see a little bit more improvement, preferably even through this trend line, but certainly not below the 4,000 mark. All right, that's the update for the week. Go ahead and post any questions or comments. Thanks.